performance begins. The first driver prepares his motorcycle for the event's initial ride. He must quickly accelerate to a speed of 40 miles per hour. Any slower, and gravity will pull this young daredevil tumbling to the ground. Even though one slip-up could mean death, he lets go of the handlebars and rides with no hands. But that's just a warm-up for what's coming up next. Attempting to drive a car in this perpendicular fashion at the same time is almost suicidal. One slip, and the well of death will earn its name. The car begins its treacherous climb up the wall, gradually picking up speed. At this height, the driver must constantly maintain his high speed. And he's slower, and he risks crashing into the ground. Despite the danger, he stuns the audience by leaning out of his seat, opening the door, and waving to the cheering crowd, careful to keep his foot on the gas pedal. Even a slight loss of speed could mean disaster. After a few very tense moments, both the car and motorcycle come safely to the end of their rides. You could see the motorcycle and, and, and the car together. If one of them don't go according to plan, you can, you can see what, what could have happened. July 15, 2000. The South American country of Uruguay is engulfed by a strange substance, a mysterious breathing foam, leaving coastal towns looking like one giant unfinished car wash. I think anyone, given the phrase, here's a town covered with foam, would say, I need to see that before I totally believe it. The strange tale all began with a little bit of bad weather. Along the coastline here, storms are not uncommon, but soon it began to take a very strange and unexplainable twist. Within hours, it had become a truly surreal scene. Dr. Sidney Perkowitz is the author of the book Universal Foam and the leading expert on the strange phenomenon referred to as sea foam. I've seen it off the rocky coast of California, but never anything that had this kind of overall magnitude and impact. It even surprised me. I'm supposedly I'm some kind of foam expert, but this blew my mind. The unbelievable amount of foam was smothering everything from people to cars to streets, even entire houses. But what could possibly be causing it? My guess is it's really ordinary sea foam, except that the molecules that bind it together that make it stronger, last longer, were different. Maybe the ocean was polluted at that point. This huge rolling mass of Mother Nature's shaving cream stretched across 250 miles of shoreline. After almost an entire week, the foam finally dissipated and normal life returned to the bewildered citizens. Jeff, is this the toughest part? <laughs> Next part I look least forward to. <laughs> Jeff! Oh, good. Oh. The year is 1947. A special ping pong game is set up at the New York City YMCA to demonstrate an experimental cellular rubber. The table and pads are lined with the material. 
and a raw egg replaces the ball. Amazingly, the eggs don't crack, unless they hit the floor, of course. Incredibly, a mat made from the cellular rubber even helps these eggs survive a fall out of a fifth-story window. The unique rubber is more cushiony than most due to its microscopic nitrogen-filled cells. Unfortunately, the rubber proves too costly to manufacture for commercial use, and production on this real-life flubber hits the skids. Believe it or not, to mourn the death of a loved one, the Donnie people will cut off their earlobes and their fingers. The death of a Donnie calls for bravery and a long period of mourning. Funerals last for weeks, even months, depending on the person's social status. The mutilated body parts serve much the way a picture would. Every time they see their self-inflicted wound, they're reminded of their loved one. <laughs> The tribal tradition is an earthly attempt to honor and respect ancestral spirits, to give part of one's life when another ends. Believe it or not. People flock from miles around to the Cambodian village of Bat Trang, all looking to be cured of their ailments by these two bulls. Locals believe that being licked by the beasts will heal them. The two animals gain a reputation for having supernatural powers after their owner dreams they are the incarnation of sacred beings. When one of the bulls licks a lame man's leg, he claims to be cured, and the word of the holy cows spreads like wildfire. <laughs> Those not fortunate enough to be licked by the bull are forced to settle for less. Believing that bull dung and urine have magical properties, they ingest as much as they can get their hands on. As for the bulls, they have a new lease on life, considering that until their special abilities were discovered, they were headed straight for the butcher's block. Believe it or not. For centuries, members of one small African tribe had displayed the same remarkable birth defect. A strange physical characteristic even experts find shocking. They're better known as the ostrich people because of their two toes and his feet. Anthropologist Kevin Duffy has been studying Africa's languages and customs for the past 20 years. He believes this unusual tribe living in the Zambezi Valley is the only group of two-toed men and women in the world. The ostrich people have difficulty running or walking because of the peculiar shape of their feet. Unable to wear shoes, the ostrich people proudly show their feet wearing sandals that must be specifically made for each person's unique foot. The birth defect, which is found in about one in four babies, is due to an age-old custom, forbidding marriage outside the tribe. Inbreeding is still prevalent among the ostrich people because they are so isolated. They will continue to be born like this for many generations to come. Believe it or not. And an American man has shattered the stone skipping record. Russell Byers sent a stone skipping across a Pennsylvania river 51 times. The old record was 40 skips. Finally, with the push of a computer button, the chase was on. From soccer stars to Shakespeare. Everyone and everything European got its 15 seconds of domino fame. An Irish shamrock. Italy is erupting Vesuvius. Even Hans Christian Andersen's ugly duckling. 
So taken were Europeans with the event that it was televised live in some countries. And in the Netherlands, the live broadcast was the top-rated TV show of its time. If laid out in a straight line, the dominoes would have stretched for 15 and a half miles. But then we would have missed seeing the domino-rendered works of Rembrandt and Picasso. Or a slow-moving Dutch cheese mowing its way through domino fields forever. Now, not everything went according to plan. The Loch Ness Monster refused to rise out of the water here. And in some places, the tiles just went dead. But thanks to ingenious planning, even though some sections failed, the main artery of dominoes kept on rolling. Past 500,000. Then a million. Finally, the big finale, the 13 flags of the European community. After almost a year of planning, it took just 35 minutes to topple all those tiles. They had smashed the old record by more than a million dominoes. But the only common European theme missing from the display was a soccer riot. For hundreds of cultures still untouched by technology, Daily life means living off the land as they have for ages. But sometimes, just getting a simple drink of water can lead to unimaginable agony. That's because accidentally ingesting this tiny parasite can eventually cause it to grow inside the human body up to three feet long. And believe it or not, the only way to remove it is to pull it out inch by excruciating inch. This African villager is waiting for treatment, an unfortunate victim of an almost extinct parasite, the guinea worm, commonly known as the fiery serpent. The worm gets its name from the painful burning sensation the victim experiences. Water is poured on the wound to cool it. Ironically, it's often from the same stagnant ponds and polluted rivers that caused the condition in the first place. The larvae actually live in the water. When an unsuspecting victim drinks, the larvae attach themselves to the intestines. There they live off nutrients and start growing. It's the beginning of a ticking time bomb that often takes a long time to explode. The uh, incredible thing is that they live in you for about a year and your immune system doesn't recognize that there is this huge worm inside of you. Meanwhile, although victims develop high fevers, most remain unaware they're carrying this ever-growing megaparasite, which eventually works its way through the body's connective tissue down towards the body's lower extremities. Then, out of nowhere, the worm's head pops through the skin, never failing to shock villagers who believe they're cursed. The only way to remove the thread-like worms is to wait until they appear. Then the tip of the worm is carefully wrapped around a matchstick, and the painful process begins. But the removal is so torturous, it can only be done bit by bit. And unbelievably, there are documented cases of a single person having as many as 60 worms. Though the worms themselves may not kill, the infections they cause can. Luckily, this young villager is treated successfully, expected to fully recover. And while medical crusaders like those at the Carter Center continue to use education and special water filters in the fight to eradicate the fiery serpent, the threat of the guinea worm is still very much alive and maybe only a drink of water away. Everyone knows cats can be picky eaters, but there's one tabby named Tessa that's taking finicky to a whole new level. Because believe it or not, when this cat eats, she uses a fork. On a scale of one to 10, 
I would rate her table manners as probably a seven or an eight. It all started when Faye Merle's kids left home, and she was left with only her husband, Bill, for company during mealtime. I just decided that I wanted to have someone else to eat with us. For several months, Faye worked closely with Tessa, using a technique that she's not sharing with anyone. I like to say it's a family secret. Now in the Merle house, mealtime is a big occasion. It begins with a quick cleanup. This is the way we wash our paw, wash our paw, wash our paw. The first course, gourmet cat food. And then this refined feline does her thing, shoveling it in with a fork. I taught her to eat the most expensive food on the market. But she's not only good with a fork. Now, when Tessa has a yen for noodles, she chows down using chopsticks. I thought it would be a good gesture since we were going to Korea. It's the best ice cream in the and world. And when it's finally time for dessert, nothing but a spoon will work for this ice cream loving cat. According to her owner, Tessa's table manners have opened up a whole new future. The year is 1932. Four-year-old Billy Crawford inflates his homemade flying machine and gets ready for takeoff. Billy's first attempts are not his best, soaring only a few feet before coming in for some pretty rough landings. But this hardy little aviator persists, and while he may not go down in the history books, Billy does manage to eventually make headlines, floating his helium balloon over the rooftops of Cleveland, Ohio, for nearly four hours. because when Alexander hits the town, everyone stops and stares at the ultimate rubberneck. Upon closer examination of his giraffe-like neck, it's obvious that while all seven of the delicate bones are normal, Alexander's ligaments are unusually long. But walking away is the last thing on Mike's mind, even though there are warning signs that conditions for the jump aren't right. The grass is so soft out there, I packed it with my truck. We're just checking it out right now because it's like riding in sand. Mike needs to hit the ramp at 70 miles an hour to reach his landing zone. And despite the fact that the soggy grass might slow him down, Mike decides to gamble and go for it. I hear the ball. at his jump in slow motion, it's easy to see how almost immediately everything went wrong. His mother can't believe what she's seeing. From the minute he took off, he's in trouble. Mike leans back and tries to bail, but it's too late. Slamming into the ground, his body wedges underneath the landing ring, escaping decapitation by only inches. 